All right. We are thrilled to be here. Summer Showcase, Touchstone Showcase, here joined in their brand new office by Nicole and Larry Rideout. Welcome to both of you. Thank you, Thank Jen. you. This has been, you've been on our wish list for a while to have uh, featured you both on our podcast, so we're thrilled to be here with you. Who should we go to to talk about Smart this? Smart one first. <laughs> <laughs> we'll go to Nicole first. Tell us about this beautiful new space and the process to end up here. Yeah, this that's um, the space is really incredible. We're excited to be here. Obviously, you're in the space. It's very well lit, very quintessential Boston. Um, I know you mentioned we have offices very close by, and we think it's really important that we have a presence in every community. Um, that's one thing we've learned about being in Boston is each community is its own entity, and, and we really want to play a role in those communities. So, yes, we have an office up the street in Back Bay, like you mentioned, and up the street in the South End and all over the city. But this um, this spot has been something we've been really coveting for a while. So we waited for a really perfect space and we feel like we got it. This was actually when we started the company in 2007, we opened the South End and this would have been the first location if we could do it. We made several attempts and we couldn't make it happen. And then we moved on to other places. So it took us 15 years to get here, but we're here. That's relentless yeah. and persistent, yeah. right? Um, so Larry, your, your title chairman and founder of Gibson Sotheby's international and Nicole street chief strategy officer. Yes. So yes. I wanted to make sure that was clear. And you're actually the first father daughter duo on our show. Oh, that's so awesome. that's exciting. We've had, a, I think we've had mother son in the past, but no father daughter. So there you there's go. something special about father daughter, right? The second daughter in the company as well. It runs our reload department. So it's father, daughter, daughter, father, daughter, <laughs> daughter. <laughs> they got you outnumbered. That's the way to go. Um, so we're thrilled to have you again today. Um, tell, I just like to get into it. I guess we'll go to, to you first, Larry on this. Um, I think what we try to do on our show is really feature sort of the early days. Um, and if you could just tell us, I mean, go back as far as you'd like, but tell us about your story in the industry, um, and how you ended up where you are today. Well, you know, I, I kind of come from a different uh, perspective than most, I guess, broker owners. I actually started out in, uh, Charlestown under the Tobin bridge. In, as a teamster, I was a truck in the trucking industry, and uh, my wife grew tired of that after 11 years and decided that I should do something else. So I went into the real estate industry. I joined a company, uh, Century 21 in Woburn, and then I, I'm not going to bore you with all the details, but I ended up in Realty Corporation, which is the uh, franchisor of all the brands, Call a Banker, Century 21, ERA. I ended up in that particular group in New Jersey, and I was promoted a few times to the point where I was running all the uh, franchise sales opportunities, merger acquisition opportunities. So doing that seemed like a natural fit for myself and my partner, Paul McGann, to maybe take a shot ourselves. You know, it's like the, I'm the president of the hair club for men. You yeah. know, I liked it so much, <laughs> I went and did it myself. But uh, So we went in here, we bought uh, the South End, 50 agents. It was about a $250 million company. They had an office in Dorchester, uh, and that was in 07. And... Uh, Put all our money into that, and then 08, the world crashed. Yeah. And everybody was either going out of business or growing, and that's the way I, my, I thought. So we, Paul and I talked, and we said, look, we can, we can roll up in a ball, or we can continue to grow. And that's when we had our, one of our major growth opportunities. We went from three offices, to, excuse me, to seven offices during that, from 08 to 11. And it was essentially, uh, you know, opportunities that were, you couldn't say no to if you had money. We didn't have money. But we paid the expenses and got through it. And when the market turned, we were sitting in the right place. That's wonderful. Yeah. I mean, that's and that's a quick, quick way to get to here. But uh, talk a bit, you know, more about, I guess, the recent history from from eleven onward. It's seemed like the growth has been tremendous. I guess, Nicole, what's your what's your perspective on that? Has been over the years. The growth has has been really exciting. Um, we've kind of all learned that's. I, I would say Larry's bread and butter is a merger acquisition. So I've loved learning that. Um, but I think that the part of the growth that is sort of intangible that people don't think of or maybe realize is going on is the emotional side of it um, and also scaling the company, but then scaling the company's culture. Um, so that's been what I've really focused on for the last decade is as we grow, how do we maintain the family feel? How do we maintain the culture? How do we make every, like I said, really focus, double down on the communities that we're in um, and make all of our agents and staff feel like family. So that's been a big part of our growth. And, and I think we've done pretty well so far. And that's a challenge not to interrupt. But yeah, of course. The, the culture is a critical piece for us. And as you get larger, it's hard to be, feel that family culture unless you really work hard at it. And so our leadership team is, 
in the street every day, making sure that our agents know they're the number one priority to us. They are our assets. And now I love all those points. What, what, what do you think about when you think about the road ahead, Larry, as we're meeting right now, it's sort of an uncertain time again. Very much um, so. What are your thoughts about the, the future, the next three to five years for, for your brand and for the group? Well, I think for our brand, we're, uh, we're in what I consider a moat. We have uh, very experienced agents that have survived many you know, downturns, 08 and on and on. So I don't think in terms of the, the company and the agents, they're going to be okay. The market's going to have a little bump. You know, the, the rates are going up. But in the markets that we're in, uh, the rates aren't as significant as in the middle markets and, and, and such. So we're seeing less of an impact at the moment. We will see, all feel it a little bit, but there's not going to be a price crash. We have a very, very strong foundation. The economy is in a really good shape when you think about it from the foundation side. So it's going to, ch it, it's going to change, and we think for the good. The acceleration of the prices have been much, much too much. No one can keep up that acceleration and continue to thrive. So the, 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 uh, the fact that it may go down a little bit will be a good thing for us, I think, for the real estate industry. Yep, for a little bit of consolidation, yes. potentially. And we, and we have many more opportunities to look at, and that's another thing that's kind of interesting. People, a lot of broker owners don't want to go through another, any kind of a shakeup, whether it's large or small, and we just try to let people know we're out here. Yep. We're not going anywhere, so just come and chat with us. Now, I would love to talk a bit more about the sort of the father-daughter dynamic. Did you, did you always growing up know you wanted to get into the family business or how did that sort of, uh, people want to hear about that. So how did that yeah, happen? Yeah, I didn't. It's funny. I was going to jump on the three to five year vision and I think yeah, that, please do that, too, I think that well. lends itself yeah. nicely to the dynamic. Um, I was going to say, looking forward to answer the question, um, no, <laughs> but I grew up in the industry. I saw everything. Um, I think I saw the good, bad, and the ugly. Why did um, you say no so harshly? Yeah. <laughs> Um, it wasn't ne exactly the plan, um, but it actually ended up that I got into the business. I had um, was a public policy major. I was in D.C. I wanted to be in politics. And I came back and my dad and I, we were going through something with our family. And I kind of jumped in in an interim role 10 years ago and realized how much there was here and also realized that there was a real legacy to build upon. And I think that that's something that I've always really coveted and most people on our team do too. And I think that's what's going to differentiate us in the next three to five years. I think just us in general, when you look across the industry, we symbolize more longevity than you're going to see across the board. We marry nicely between the legacy piece and the innovation piece. And sometimes we swap out on, you know, we have a whole team of people that bring different um, views to the table and it's not always based on age. Um, but I think that we marry those two things nicely. And right now I think respect is a huge thing. And I think that oftentimes those two things, those two sides, they're not, they don't see eye to eye and there's a level of respect that doesn't exist. We have both. We have the traditional brand. We have the sophistication. We also have the innovation and the longevity. We have a very youthful leadership team and we have a vision for what's coming. And I think that um, we've held our steady hand and held a strong line on being, it, being traditional, on being a legacy brand that people can trust and feel comfortable with. And I think that in a time like right now where people are uncertain that that's going to really be what people are looking for. Um, so I'm hoping that we have a substantial leg up. I, I know that we will um, going forward, but yeah, the, the, uh, the two of us, I mean, all of our family has been through the business. One of my sisters is, is um, still in the business. She's with us and she's a big part of our leadership team. But I think that the two of us, we just got along. And I, and that's the last thing I was going to say was family keeps you honest. Yeah. So it keeps the whole organization honest because you can't hide from family. Um, they know you, they can see right through it. And so it's a very candid leadership team. It's a very candid organization because there's no facade because I know who he is and he knows who I am and we know who each other are. So um, I think that's been a real benefit. It's also really challenging, um, but it, and challenging in the best way, I would say. Wonderful answer across, uh, across the board there. How would you add to that comment, Larry? It must be... I your pride and joy to I have both of your daughters. couldn't say better. No, yeah. I, that's, but that's what Nicole is all about. And uh, she's, she's a good sounding board for me. Uh, and as she said, we're, we're showing the community and showing the state that we're, there's a legacy here. We're not going anywhere. I've got a, an entire group behind me that has another 10, 15 years in them. And uh, so we feel like that's the piece that's going to be the strongest piece when you're out there in the real estate world is the fact that, First off, there's not a board of directors or investors asking me how much money we're going to make for them today. It's, it's Paul McGann and myself, yep. and we make sure we take care of our agents, and that's probably the most important thing to all of us. There is no one else I'm reporting to, 
And I think that's a very powerful piece that we bring to the table that uh, a lot of companies don't. I would agree with that wholeheartedly. And, and I will just comment as well. I feel like over the years, as I've met with agents or met agents that work on your team, they, they uh, relay a tremendous amount of pride in being part of your team. And that's more than I can say about some other places, but they do seem to be very, really thrilled to be a part of what you're doing. So the culture is having a tremendous impact. Yeah, it's very um, important to us. I'm curious, what, what do you look for? Because I'm thinking of people in particular without naming names, but what do you look for in somebody when you meet them and think like maybe this is the right career for them? Or how do you sort of guide them in that direction? Like just in your, in your daily life, what do you look for in an agent? When we started, it was, we put in a place, kind of an invitation only. And we've kind of stayed with that. I mean, obviously we've gotten bigger, so we talk and, and we do meet people and talk to them and see if, if they fit our culture. But the reality was, it was the most important piece for us was that we asked our agents, we said, look, you're in control of who's going to sit next to you and work with you. If you run into a co-broker or someone that you think is absolutely phenomenal, I want you to introduce them to us. So when we started the company, the South End, we grew from 50 to 100 agents almost overnight, and it was all re referrals from our agent base. So we try to stay with that, but obviously when you get bigger, now becomes the interview process, and the most important thing to us is culture. It yep. isn't the production. We've, had, uh, we've turned away some major people that you would know because – we could, they couldn't fit into our company. So I'm not looking for the, the fast dollar. I'm looking for the long-term person that's going to grow with us. And that's kind of always the, the mantle that we've put out there. This is mm -hmm. how we do it. And we've turned down a lot of people. We've brought on some new people and, and made them uh, very productive. I love how it's all organic, it sounds yeah. like, from, just mm -hmm. from the referral base internally. Yeah. That's the best way to grow, in my opinion. Um, Nicole, I'll go to you with this question here. What excites you about the real estate industry right now um, as you look at the market overall, the second half of the year, you know, what are you, what are you anticipating? What do you think is going to happen right now? I'm not an overly dramatic person, so you'll never hear that out of me. Um, and I think that we're going to see a shift, but I don't think it's going to be anything that turns us all upside down, I guess. So what I'm most excited about is when I was just going to say, when we're looking for someone that we think will succeed with the company and obviously then therefore with the industry, like across the board, it's just real for us. I, like I mentioned, like we're just very, we don't waste a lot of energy on being not being authentic. Um, and I think what's interesting about the real estate industry is how many people, different facets of life, demographics need homes and different kinds of homes, whether it's investors, second homes. Um, and there's something to be said for, there's a there's an agent for every client. And if you do your job right and you're true to yourself and you're real, we think that that's, I think that that's basically the secret sauce. Um, and that's what I'm excited about going forward because I think it's almost like when they say, when the tide goes out, you find out who's swimming naked. Um, yeah. Be it from the company standpoint to the agent standpoint, thanks to HGTV, I think we have a very bloated industry at the moment. Um, and it's not a problem to have more people, but I think good people are going to rise. Um, good people that are good at their job um, in the next what you said, three to five years, yeah. but honestly, the next 12 to 24 months, I think people are going to have an opportunity to shine. And we were saying, I mean, I think there's been such a big shift. We went from the pandemic hitting so hard and fast on every level that there was this kind of panic. Um, and everybody was kind of in this adrenaline, you know, we were, and then all of a sudden, you know, things really picked up. And that, so everybody just felt like it was almost like scarcity mindset. We got to keep moving. We got to keep moving. Um, and I think people are a little burnt out and they almost feel bad saying that because the market's been pretty good. But I actually think that now people are going to get to do what they do best. And I actually am excited that people could take a breath and do that. And when there's a challenge is when you step up to the challenge. Mm -hmm. And to give you a point of reference, when COVID was going on, we acquired two companies. We acquired Arlington, we acquired the Metro West company in the middle of COVID, and they were, they've been phenomenal ever since, but no one was moving. Everybody was frozen in place, and we didn't freeze in place. We continued to keep our eye on the prize and keep focused on what we we're supposed to be doing. Keep growing through COVID, and yeah. nice to meet you on Zoom, and yeah. we're the new yeah. bosses. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, that's wonderful. Um, what would you say, Larry, to that question? Because obviously a different question for you, but what excites you the most right now about being in the industry, having your family involved? having such a, uh, a, a, mas a machine here running behind well, you. You know, what excites me is the, the uh, effort we put forth for the last 15 years, it's almost like reaping the benefits now. The, the leadership team I have is, as Nicole mentioned, very young, yep. but so experienced and so strong. And we kind of all grew together. And it, you know, they're, they move more quickly than I do. They're smarter than I am. The, I always joke, but they really are. They, they come at it from a different perspective. 
But at the same time, I think we complement one another because I can, I can pull the reins back and say, whoa, 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 we might want to go that direction. They, they may ignore me, but the thing is, it's such a strong leadership team and it's such a strong associates that it's just, for me, it's, it's, it's heartening. I can't, I'm so excited about what we have here. And now the challenges come, the economy and such, and, and that, pro, that will provide more opportunities for us if we, if we want them. And so the challenges present opportunities, and we have a foundation of agents and leadership teams that I think it, I, I can take anywhere and do whatever we need to do. So for me, it's, it's almost a culmination of all the effort and time and, uh, that we put in for the last 15 years, and you feel like you might be there. You're never there, but yeah. you feel like you're, you might be there. Nicole or Larry, um, would you talk a little bit about your geographic footprint? Because it seems to be really large. Um, so how would you explain that? How has it grown? You know, what's been... I can do what's, that if you want. Yeah. <laughs> As I mentioned earlier, we started out of three offices. We were 40 agents, I think 50 agents, maybe 50 agents, $240 million company. Uh, we expanded, and I'm not going give, to give too much away. Yeah, of course, yeah. We, we follow our, our, the lead. We follow yeah. where we're going, where we need to be. We don't, we're not trying to be a thousand offices. Yeah. We want to be effective. Wherever we go, if we make an acquisition, it has to feed my company. Yep. Or it doesn't pass muster and we don't do it. So there's, a, there's that feeding the company that caused us to grow. And so we're from Manchester by the sea down to P-Town. So essentially all of Eastern Mass, 25 offices. We're now at 450 agents and we closed last year $4.5 billion. Wow. So the, the Congratulations. Growth, the growth has the been phenomenal, but it's been uh, measured and, and with, with strategy, not yep. just uh, haphazard, you know, go open a company, go open an office. Has to be a feeder for our existing company or we don't go there. So now do you look to expand just a little bit further out from the existing offices that are in place? I think it's going to happen. Yeah. Yeah, I do. How, how much of the, I have to, I'll go to Nicole for this question, but you mentioned listen, we're in an office right here. I can walk in five minutes and be in probably two of your other offices. So, you know, how long do you envision that that's going to be important for people, for communities to actually have retail space? Because I personally think it's going to be incredibly important for quite a while. Yeah, I agree with you. That's something that I've really been honing in on the last couple of months is just what's our vision for yeah. that. Um, it's going to look different. Um, with people working from home and different markets that we have, I think we have unique opportunity. But I think that a lot of big real estate companies, they're, you know, they're consolidating, they're saying they don't need it. And yes, people are doing a lot virtually, right? They're signing contracts. I mean, you know, everything yeah, that you I mean, do, yeah, yeah. but the community is, real estate is the community. And I don't think that you could be effective um, in a community without having a, a presence. I don't think it needs to be three stories and everyone works there all day, every day. People are gonna work from their home. They're gonna do what they wanna do. But I think you have to have a place where people can walk in and feel like, they belong um, from an agent standpoint, right? So we obviously our culture, our community and our company is important. Um, so I think it's gonna be more important than ever to be honest, but I think that it's gonna be really exciting to see what um, people that value community come up with for office space. And it's something I'm excited to kind of reconfigure in the next couple of years. Yeah, I mean, there's only so many Starbucks you can meet at and- yeah. Right. We kind of are looking to do that little bit of more of a shared workspace. Yep. Um, come in, collaborate. We did that in our Cambridge office and, and it was really nice. We, um, there's some private spaces, of course, but what you found was actually like tables like we're sitting at right now. Yeah. People would bring their client in and they'd walk them through a listing presentation. They were doing it intentionally right out in the open to help other agents hear what they're doing. It's like we have a very collaborative culture. And so I think that's what we're going to lean into is just more, more collaboration in the offices and get that feel. I, I love those answers. Larry, you sounded like you had some comments to that as well. No, no, I, no. I just... I'm in awe listening to her. She's, yeah. she's doing a good job answering everything. Um, how do you both feel about, Larry, I'll go to you first, about social media. You know, it sounds like when you took over in 07, I mean, that's when real, things really started to take off. How do you feel about social media, how it's helped your business, how it's changed your business from that time to now? Because it's been a tremendous period of time. It has been. And, you know, I'm, I'm an older gentleman, as you can well see, until they obviously make my hair dark. We're going to fix the hair. That was part of Larry's uh, rider to his contract. <laughs> but... <laughs> the reality is I'm very active on social media and I find it it's very uh, it gives me a great advantage and people ask me who who handles your social media and I said I do yep you know I do it myself and so I'm, I see it as a very important factor I, and I see things phasing out like maybe Facebook is one element one one uh, group of people and Instagram's another now TikTok I haven't touched TikTok yet and yep. I don't know if I'll have to do that I've Children God. for that, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. We need that. The industry you can see needs him doing that. Dances. Yeah. But if you if you see on my my social media, I have a hashtag. Relationships matter. Yeah. 
And I put that on everything because I always want to remind people that's the most critical piece in this real estate relationship. And, you know, it, it, nothing's going to take the place of that, yeah. you know, regardless of what other companies say. And they're going to come in and change the world. People want to be involved with people that they trust. And that's really the most critical piece. And in social media, I get to say that all the time. And I get a lot of reaction for it. Yeah. No, that's wonderful. How, what would you say to that, Nicole? You hit, you hit me when you were talking about authenticity, because I feel like so much of our industry is the opposite of that. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think that was a little bit of what I was alluding to. Yeah. We like to find the diamonds in the rough. No, we like to find the people that truly are authentic. And I think that social media can get a bad rap. Um, I always say it needs to be a supplement, right? Yep. It's it's almost like walking into a room. I always use this example for a networking event. You're not just going to run around and say, hi, I'm Nicole. Hi, I'm Nicole. Hi, I'm Nicole. And pass out your card. You're going to have conversations. You're I'm a realtor. Are you kids. selling? <laughs> yes, right. Yeah. <laughs> talk about your kids, talk about your interests, your hobbies, where you live, um, get to know people. And that is what I think that social media is so powerful. And obviously, Larry mentioned Facebook and different audiences in different places. But I think that if you use it the right way, and you realize you might be speaking to a different audience, I know I'm speaking to a different audience on my Instagram versus my Facebook. I also think the world is looking to see like the difference that you're making now, yeah. which is really unique on social media. Yep. And so re really not into like beating the drum. Um, I don't think people are looking for that anymore. I don't think I, people are really looking for like how much you sold necessarily. They want to know how many people you helped. They want to know. And that's, we really try not to do that um, from a company standpoint. We try to tell stories. They want to hear stories. They're on there to see authenticity um, and get to know you. I know I've gotten to know a, a lot of people just with, I, I know Ashley from, um, we both have a baby the same age, yeah. things like that. And yeah. you can connect on those things. So it's really using it how you feel comfortable. Um, but we talk about that so much um, with our agents because people just have to get their own groove. They need like a, a guiding light, right? Like Yes. A, that's it. And I mean, get, switching gears a bit, Larry, but we were talking offline about the partnership and commitment with the Cape League. Yes. And, yes. um, you know, every night I went to about probably 20 games this summer and it's the summer series and sponsored by Gibson Sotheby's, you know, is like beating the drum over and over. And um, so, so thank you for doing that, first of all. And what a great commitment to the community. You want to talk a little bit more about, I guess, not just the Cape League effort, but other types of efforts like we, that that you've We're made? involved in all of our communities as yeah. much as we can be. Everyone reaches out at the South End. We're very involved. Back Bay, Beacon Hill's our newest and we're trying to be more involved. I think we have some things going on with Beacon Hill, but we think it's critical that the community knows that we're, this is what we're here for. It's not just to sell you your home or, or, or show you a home. It's about being part of the community. Uh, and so in 25 communities, we have an impact, like you're watching and seeing in Cape Cod. Where yeah. We make sure that people know we're out there and we're trying to contribute as well. Yeah, no, that's a great answer. It's very, really effective too, just sort of old school, hand-to-hand, uh, -hand, you know, over the mic on the PA system marketing across all the stadiums. Um, we'll switch to some other questions here just to get a get, uh, change of pace here. I'll go to you first too, Nicole. Um, what skills or habits would you credit for your success? I tend to take risks. I'll put myself out there um, and I'm pretty bold that way. Um, I am not a super detail oriented person. Many people would tell you that. Um, but yeah, I think I'm, like I said, I've used it too many times today, but authentic, genuine. I think that you waste a lot of energy when you aren't. Um, I follow up with people. I make sure I get to know people and I actually care about people, which I learned from Larry. And I think that I realized day one that that was really the most important piece, but I'm very driven, um, persistent. Well, I know what I want and I'm gonna go ask for it. Yep. Um, and so that's definitely what I would say has helped me. It's a great answer. Larry, similar question. Would you go to a skill or habit? What would you credit for all your success? I think probably habit. Uh, you know, I had, to, I had to, I lived in a tough environment, so I, I was a, a tough, inter internally I'm tough, but I, uh, I also cry at a well-written menu. So I have a, I have a mixture, <laughs> of, uh, mixture of both. So, you know, I, like I, I love fiercely. I love my agents, and it's not just saying that. I do, and, and that's, I can get in front of a meeting and all of a sudden tear up when I'm trying to say something because of that. And I love my family dearly, you know, so and I'm going to stop there. How about, we'll go to Nicole. What's the biggest decision or change that you or the team have made in the last year? I know you're a new mom too, so it's probably a lot related to being 
being an mm. Yeah, I think, I mean, personally, I've definitely tr- started to prioritize a lot more. The work was all I really did before, and it's unique now to have something at, at home that I want to be home, and, I've, and I think that that's been actually really beneficial. Um, and I've learned to what needs to get done, what can wait, um, what needs to get done and could get done in 15 minutes and doesn't need me to sit and, you know, think about it for an hour. Um, but yeah, I think actually probably like motherhood, I think has changed me for the better in the last year. Um, just having that little piece. I think we went to an event one night and I said something to the tune of driving home of like, wow, like motherhood really makes you realize like, honestly, it let, feeds back to just kind of you can accomplish anything that you want to um so i can't birth a human you can do right (laughs) no that's the easy part (laughs) Um, and raise (laughs) yeah no i think that's really what i and in the last year i mean we've made in the last two years since covid we've made so many changes and i think it's less about the change and more about like i i could say colleen barry our ceo i mean she and i are on the phone first thing every morning and throughout the whole day and close out on the phone and I don't even know. I couldn't even think. I was trying to think of a specific change. Like we've had to make so many, so many pivots, so many shifts and um, we do it well. I mean, it's been a learning, it's been a learning curve for sure. Bringing people back um, into the office has been really um, something that's been a little bit of a challenge because some people enjoy the Zoom meetings and some people really hate the Zoom meetings. And you kind of have to play that. You can't always do both. You can't make everybody happy, but um, we've made a lot of changes and it's, it's gone well. Yeah, the benefit, so you know, to, to Paul and myself is uh, the, the younger leadership team, uh, the technology evolution just blows me away with what we've done, what we had to do when COVID happened, but what's continued since. And it's driven by the younger group. And, and you know, a lot of it, I'll be honest with you, I don't understand it and I don't need to really. I think the technology is key. And to your point, if you need to understand it, I'm sure you can figure it out. Okay. But if you don't have to, nope. that's fine too, right? You do what you've done over the years and it's working out great, obviously. Um, how about some some more sort of lighthearted questions, I guess. When celebrating a family member's birthday or going on vacation, who's the first to talk about work? Uh, me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> She's not lying. He no. looked right at you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, what do you each bring uh, benefits your personal and professional relationship? What, how do you feel that's kind of changed over the years? It's funny. When I first started working with you, I, I they used to call us chip and block. Like I, we were like, I was chip off the old block. Yep. Um, and I think over the years, it might have been just because we've worked so closely together. I've almost seen more of my mom in me. Like I noticed those little, cause I'm like, I'm realizing the little differences that we have. Yep. But those have been good. I mean, um, she's figured out how to move me around. That's now she's mean. the block, yeah. and you're the chip. Right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> what would you say to that, Larry? It must be a great Same experience. Thing. It's been great. You know, at first she worked for me. Yep. Now she works with me. Yeah. You know, that's the best way I can say it. It's it's she's she's moved into the leadership role, and I, I actually reach out to her for questions and help every every so often. Where before she was working for me in in the company, and, and now she's one of one of. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, one of the partners of the company. And one of the biggest challenges, like you alluded to, is I, I have that. We're both um, cancers. We're both born in that part of the, and we definitely are like the hard outside and like very emotional. And we care so deeply about people that you take things very personally when you work with family. And that was a big thing that I learned right away, um, just learning to take a step back. Um, because you do, you're like, oh my gosh, like you get very like you're on the offense or on the defense in times, but um, that I've learned for sure to just sort of take that step back, take a breath. But I think a lot of that comes with time and watching it happen. Um, But yeah, we have, we've got, we got along very well. We are very, very similar. And I think that's why I sort of know when he needs a minute um, and some people read it differently. And it's just, we've had a very unique, really interesting relationship, I would say. Do you feel like people can, I mean, do you, well, it's a question first. Do you have agents on your team that are parent child at this point? Teams or people who are parents? We have a children? few, yeah. um, yes, like do, budding. Actually. Yeah. 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 We do out in Metro West, There's a mother and, and two daughters. So yeah. yeah, we do have some family. So it must be interesting to sort of get, yes. you know, to watch the perspective of how they grow. Well, yeah. And then, and then yourselves as sort of an example of people who've done it well yeah. and to sort of and you can relate. lean into that. It's an a, a incredible edge for us when we go before a new company. And we, I bring my leadership team, and it's my, half of it's my family standing there. They know that there's a reality to this company. It's not something that's going to come and go. Yep. You know? And I think that's a real advantage for us. 
Yeah. We traveled together for like a number of years. And I think that people like, it seemed like everywhere we went, everybody kind of like knew us and remembered us. And like, I really attribute that to being family because when you're like father, daughter, people immediately just like relax. There's a yeah. level of relatability, whether they were like, oh, like they, they think of their daughter. Oh, they think of their father, whatever it might be. It allowed us to connect really well with people very quickly, as opposed to when you go in cold and you're just kind of just you. Um, but like anything, it definitely had it's moments when it is, it's personal and you're at Thanksgiving and, you know, yeah. we were trying to close a deal on um, New Year's Eve a couple yeah. of years ago, um, acquisition. And yeah, sometimes the holidays there, it's interesting, but it's all good. It's been amazing. It's I, the American dream, right? The family business and yes. you pass it on and, you know, multiple, multiple generations. So I think that's probably what draws people. And obviously you both do such a fantastic job across the board. The biggest blow to my ego was uh, when we were traveling together to com conferences and such, and she was getting out ahead of me in places. And I went from Larry, being Larry right out to being Nicole's dad. Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. This is Nicole's dad. Like yep. what happened to me? <laughs> <laughs> it happened quickly too. Yes, it did. Um, couple of fun questions just to wrap up because I know we're coming up on time. Um, Larry, favorite guilty pleasure? What would you say? Ice cream. Ice cream. What, any particular type of ice cream? I love coconut. How about you, Nicole? Favorite guilty pleasure? If it's food, french fries. Biggest pet peeve? Biggest pet peeve. This is really random, but I'm just going to say what's say in my it. mind. Say it. When people say I was told, I don't like um, <laughs> cop outs. I don't like when people don't take ownership. Yep. And that usually is what that alludes to me. Um, I like when someone just says, I did this or you mean I, like I was this. told to do this. I was, yeah, told to do that. a little yeah. bit of like, a, I like when people like drive. That's a good one. Yeah. And I like, I guess my, for me, it's, I like people to get to the point. I don't want a long mm -hmm. story, you know, get, tell me what you want me to answer. And I will answer the solution so, thing. We always say, yeah. come to us with a solution. It's okay. If you have a problem, but what's the solution? Yep. Yep. And I make like, it quick. My other thing that I'll say to people is don't ever ask me a question that you don't want the answer to <laughs> my leadership team. So, you know, if you want to answer it, I'm going to give it to you. So yep. don't ask me something and hope I'm going to sugarcoat what I'm going to do. So it's kind of the same vein, I guess. Just let's get to the point. Let's yep. figure out what direct. we move on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Be direct. Uh, hopefully we've done a good job on the podcast <laughs> of that. Um, how about last television show that you binge watched? We'll go to you, Nicole. Oh, the, um, I'm not a big television person, but the Theranos. Um, oh, yes. Yeah. Yep. Yep. I watched that series. I loved that. Yeah fascinating and mm -hmm. somewhat timely relevant as well mm -hmm. um how about you larry you tv watcher at all what's your f yellowstone yellowstone yep yeah, yeah. great I show are you ready to move out there i went out there uh, for a <laughs> sotheby's conference and it was amazing yeah amazing place but no i'm not gonna move you guys could bring the brand out there <laughs> make it happen i want to thank you both so much for for being on on the summer series touchstone showcase i know it's been lined up for a while so thank you thank you i know it's tough to get you both together and we're really grateful and thankful for your time thank you Thank you for listening to the Touchstone Showcase.